um, what we know right now without the facts. I want to go back to the State of the Union for a moment. Of course, I was on Capitol Hill uh, with you a little bit earlier this week. A very long address from President Biden, mostly focused on domestic issues, but sort of an unprecedented back and forth that we saw uh, between members and the president. Uh, take a look at these pictures right here. Uh, certainly reaction from yourself and other members during that State of the Union address. Talk to me a little bit about the dynamics of what happened on Tuesday night. I, I have never seen, I have never seen an address like that where Republicans were being smeared by their president, where they were just expected to sit on their hands and take it and not call out the obvious lies. It was fear mongering by this president. When he started attacking Republicans for wanting to take away Social Security and Medicare, what we have seen from this administration is that those policies that the runaway spending is what is making those programs vulnerable. So earlier uh, last week, earlier this week, I actually um, dropped two bills that would reaffirm Republicans' commitment to both Social Security and Medicare, because what we've seen is Medicare, for example, has been used as a slush fund by Democrats. They continue to take away money from Medicare and to put it into their pet projects, such as the Green New Deal. And even Biden, when he was Senator Biden, had put forward a, a, a bill that would have sunsetted Social Security and Medicare, and yet he is the, the hypocrisy now that he is attacking Republicans is just unbelievable. But the problem is, is that the people who are actually the victims of this are our seniors, our vulnerable se seniors that are living on fixed incomes, who under this administration are now facing higher food, higher um, energy, and higher, higher housing costs. And instead of having a president who's willing to sit down and work out the solutions to that, You've got one who's lying to them in order to distract from his horrible policies. Congresswoman, quickly before we go, we want to ask you again about uh, we've heard a lot of powerful voices coming from the House floor about DirecTV and AT&T removing Newsmax from its lineup. Uh, what sort of oversight can we expect from Republicans going forward when it comes to conservative voices that have been silenced throughout this country? I think it's a really scary time that we live in when you've got not only big tech, but you've got large corporations and even the federal government who are working to take away 